Welcome to the Davis Debrief Podcast, uh, your weekly podcast, or bi-weekly, whatever this ends up being. I don't think you should put a schedule on it at all. No, I, I think it should, it should be a weekly podcast. Your podcast, whenever we can re- schedule in or recording in our busy lives of three kids and working and life. Fair. <laughs> but nonetheless thanks for joining us uh the way that the debrief works is we chat a little bit um we do a quick review so that if you haven't seen the film uh, our review will indicate based on our taste whether or not you should go out and see the film uh give you some details on that and spoiler free and then we move to the debrief where we dive full into all the different spoilers talk about themes of the film or show and just kind of dig into all the nitty gritty stuff. So um, that is the plan for today. Mm -hmm. But first, uh, babe, uh, how are you feeling right now? Um, What do you mean? Just like your, your stomach. You've been sick the last couple of days. I I wasn't sure we were sharing that. I'm not feeling great. I believe I've been glutened. (laughs) Either glutened or, or, or food poisoned by a local uh, restaurant, which Mm -hmm. we will not name. But yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gluten free and I believe I was told something was gluten free and it wasn't. And so I've been having lots of stomach pain and I called the restaurant and I chewed them out a little bit because I was like, I think there's some wheat and some gluten in your in your things. Mm-hmm. And they swore that, nope, that we, we make these by hand. We do it ourselves. Um, so it's either they're lying or <laughs> there's there's some food poisoning going on. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But thanks for making some time to do the podcast, yeah. babe. But um, we've been we've been looking at so many different shows oh, man. Yeah. and movies Watching recently. Watching lots of stuff. And we actually need to record a couple of podcasts because we've gone through so much stuff. We watched. We did mention True Detectives in our last podcast. Did we? I, I, think. I don't remember if we I did. I think we mentioned okay. that we're watching it. Yes. And that we hadn't finished it. We finished it. We, we're going to do a. Re- we finished season one and season three. Yes. We started season two and skipped to season three. <laughs> three. Which we'll explain in the podcast about that. Totally explain. <laughs> and um, yeah, but. Uh, but today we are talking about the new movie One Love. It's the Bob Marley documentary. Documentary? What's the? What's the? I don't think it's I not. Mean, re- it's a movie. Well, it's not a. Yeah, it's a. Well, the thing is, it's like a biography, but it's not about his life. Right. It's, like his whole life. Mm-hmm. It's it's just a kind of about just his career. Yeah, the, the time period of his career. Yes, uh, and and Music a specific career. snapshot of his career. Mm-hmm. It's not even his whole career. Yeah. Um. And so that's important to know going into going into the movie to kind of know. But we actually didn't know anything about uh, Bob Marley before. As a person. Or anything. Anything. Like, yeah. So, like, I knew his music, obviously. I mean, I think everyone knows his music. Well, I didn't even know if I knew his music because yeah. I didn't know. Like, as I'm hearing certain songs, I'm like, oh, that's Bob Marley. Oh, that's Bob oh, okay. Marley. But um, I didn't actively know what his music was. Well, for me, I definitely grew up more listening to his music and just lots of reggae because in Hawaii, like, you listen to reggae on the island mm. when you're cruising. You know, it's just like a popular music in in Hawaii. Yeah, and that's and you you told me that before mm-hmm. we went out there, and then we flew out there to visit your family for a two week period, and I was blown away by how much reggae I heard yeah. the entire time, yeah. like on the radio, in the restaurants, like at Walmart, like it was just playing constantly. And it just threw me off because I just always associate reggae with uh, Jamaican culture or yeah. Caribbean culture. Well, but- I think it's just like it, it. a lot of his songs connect with island culture mm. in general. Um, and so, you know, beaches and <laughs> tropical life. But yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. So this is the review portion. So we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. What we always do, we we do a tier list. So this is unique to us. Um, this is our personal tiers of where we place certain things. You might place things differently. You might have a different way that you would rate whatever. But our tier list is low tier, uh, mid tier, 
high tier and top tier. Mm -hmm. So far uh, on the podcast, we've only given one thing a top tier, and that was the show Beef, which was just fantastic. And I think we've only given one thing a low tier, which was, what was that? Oh, uh, the... The spy movie? Oh, Argyle. Argyle. Uh, yeah. Yes. Our, our last uh, <laughs> podcast, we gave Argyle a low tier yeah. for a number of reasons. You can go back and listen to that episode. But um, so we're, we're going to give you our review. Yes. Our tier level for One mm-hmm. Love. Mm-hmm. And so, babe, what is our tier for One Love? Our tier is low tier. Low tier. And now now low tier doesn't mean not to watch it or that we didn't enjoy the movie, but there's a lot to talk about here. So Mm -hmm. so like for me personally, I'd probably give it like a mid tier because I did enjoy the movie a little bit more than Malia did, but for different reasons. And so, babe, why would you give overall uh, One Love a low tier? I think overall... I was bored a lot of the time. Mm. And that's very, that's a very general thing for me to say and doesn't really explain much. But I guess I just kind of felt like um, they didn't explain a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And so if I don't understand what's going on, then I'm not going to enjoy it, Mm. you know? And so, um, yeah, I just think like, I don't think that you should have to, like, one thing, I don't think you should have to research anything before you see a movie. Yes, I completely agree. I think that if you're going to see a movie, that the movie should explain whatever needs to be explained to understand the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and so um, we didn't research anything. Like, I, like we said, we didn't know much about him. Um, there was stuff about... Um, war in Jamaica and um like colonizing Jamaica and I don't know any of the history of that which I definitely want to learn more about now Mm. um but I think that I think that they should have explained more and even like in the relationships between the people in the band and between the husband and his wife Like, I felt like I just didn't understand what was going on most of the time. Mm. And I don't know if they were just assuming that we would just, like, fill in the blanks or on our on our own, like, or just kind of uh, get the idea on our own. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, especially with biopic movies. Because there's so much that you want to tell, Mm -hmm. whether you're telling the person's life story or just Mm -hmm. their musical career or one aspect of things. But um, it's always challenging, I think, to do a biopic. And for this, I would I would absolutely agree with that. Like I said, I went into the movie not knowing anything and really looking forward to watching the movie because I thought the movie would explain to me Mm -hmm. and help me understand Bob Marley more, his world more, his, Mm -hmm. you know, his culture more. Yeah. I was so excited when I saw the previews. Like Mm. I really could not wait to see it. And when it came out, I mean, we almost went on opening night because we had talked about it, like wanting to see it multiple times. Yeah. So, uh, it, it's uh we'll get in we'll talk a little bit we'll talk a lot more about the whys in the spoiler section Mm -hmm. but one so one of the reasons that we would rate this lower for us is the fact that they didn't explain a lot so you do need to go in it's uh it's helpful to go into this movie uh knowing some of the history of bob marley knowing the environment that he grew up in the history of jamaica some of the history of jamaica colonization uh when all of that got released um, and I think that that will enrich your experience mm-hmm. as you're watching the One Love uh, movie because it doesn't directly explain any of that mm-hmm. stuff. And so, yeah, you are kind of like trying to piece things together mm-hmm. as you're watching. And and yeah, I think it did detract from the the, the viewing experience. And I would agree with you that a lot of the relationships were yeah. not very clearly... Um, fleshed out yeah like even okay i can't even say we'll <laughs> no. get into the spoilers yeah, but yeah, yeah 
I, I seriously, I didn't understand a lot of the things that happened between the people. Mm, yes. Um, and I wanted to know. Me That's too. That's the thing. Like, I wanted to know. Mm. But they didn't explain things. And they didn't, di- they didn't like, clarify things. And so I was, I was left wondering. And I was left researching mm. on the internet afterward. Which, I mean, sometimes, which is, isn't which is fine sometimes but like literally looking up so many things because so many things weren't explained right there's there's a diff there is a difference between sparking curiosity among your audience that they they then want to go and research and learn more right. about a country or about right. like, people yeah like i definitely want to learn more about the history of jamaica now like mm-hmm. that's a natural thing i think i think that's great mm-hmm. that they've inspired me and probably lots of other people to look more into that. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that you should have to like look up all the things that happened in the movie (laughs) to figure out what was going on. Right. Right. So, so, (laughs) um, so, so there's that aspect as far as the review goes, Uh, as far as the music goes, fantastic. They incorporated a lot of his original hits Mm -hmm. music that I did not realize was Bob Marley. And I was like, Oh, that's Bob Marley, dude. Mm. POD, this band that I really loved growing up, uh, would say lines from Bob Marley's music, which makes sense because they're from SoCal, Southern California, and their music had a more reggae, f- <clears throat> a more reggae flair to it, and so it makes sense that they would borrow from him. Also, Luca Bloom, uh, the album that we always listen to, one of the songs that he sings is just a cover of mm. Bob Marley. The natural mystic flowing through mm. the air. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting off track. But um, so so I had these moments of joy during the movie as I began recognizing like, whoa, that's Bob Marley. Whoa, that's kind of the story behind why he wrote that. And it put a lot of flesh on the, the bones of some of these songs that I've heard, especially when you learn the context that they were written in yeah. because, you know, you hear some of this reggae music and about, about peace or love or, you know, whatever it is. And then you realize the environment that Bob Marley wrote the music in mm-hmm. and that he grew up in. And suddenly yeah. it's like, Oh wow. He was trying to make a statement. Yeah. He was trying to say something with his music. Um, and so I really enjoyed all the musical aspects. They had musicians on set um, they performed a lot of stuff, obviously lip synced a lot of stuff. And yeah, I just really enjoyed the musical yeah. aspect. Um, what would you say, babe, about s- sort of the acting? Like, um, I'm, uh, okay. So I think that, uh, or you can gosh, say, I forgot what his name is, but the oh, actor, I forget too. Yeah. the actor who played Bob Marley Man, I just looked that up too and I forgot already. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I think he did a great job. Mm. Um, and the actor that played his wife was hard to read. Mm. So I would say not as great. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, I think like the band members in general were pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, I... I'm torn having seen things that we've watched after the fact. Oh, yes, yes, About um, whether or not they fulfilled the roles. Right. As well as they should, as well as like, you know. We can talk about that a little bit in the review portion because there was controversy as this movie was about to, as this movie was being filmed Mm -hmm. because none of the act, none of the main actors who were acting in the film were from Jamaica. They're not Jamaican. Yeah. They were from the UK or from the US. The, from the US. And a lot of Jamaicans uh, obviously were frustrated with the Marley family mm-hmm. that they did not cast Jamaicans in a film about the most famous Jamaican uh, around the world. And I didn't even realize that. I, I definitely thought that the a lot of the people were Jamaican because of their accents. But again, I'm just an American. I don't I'm yeah. not very familiar. And yeah, and so we don't even know if they did good jobs with the accents mm-hmm. because they weren't real accents. Mm. Um and so like I could say I think the actor who played Bob Marley did really well. Um as far as 
um, expressing his emotions Mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. I don't know if he did well, like, speaking the accent Mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. That's not, like, my... That's really not my forte to say. (laughs) Um, I don't know if they did well representing the Jamaican culture. I I don't know. Yeah. But we, but we did see some positive feedback from Jamaicans as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think there's just kind of like, uh, I think there's kind of like a split, uh, feeling about it. Yeah. Um, because there were also Jamaicans that we've, uh, that we listened to after the fact that mentioned, you know, that if, they had gotten Jamaicans to do the movie. The movie would have needed subtitles right. and stuff like that, which to me, I'm fine with that. I mean, I understand that the majority of people, I guess, don't like reading subtitles, but but we're, we're more used to it because we watch like lots of foreign like, films. Yeah, mm-hmm. foreign stuff. Um, but, but for the, for the standard, I mean, I get it though, because like, I feel like the Marley family was making a business decision because the reality is that if you're making this movie, you're making it for a Western audience and most Western audiences, United States, Canada, Europe, like they're not going to be, they don't want to go to a movie to read most of the time. Um, and if you've got people with authentic Jamaican accents, you cannot understand them as an American if you're not used to that. Yeah. Like even as I was, like you can't even understand people from Hawaii either. Right. 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 Like, right. like it, there's people you can't even understand from my from my family. Yes. <laughs> um, which I get. It, it it's you it's know, just, yeah. It's a dialect thing. Yeah. It's it's but um. So it's a biz. So in my mind, I'm thinking it's a business decision. Let's find people who can play the Jamaican accent, but make it uh, a little more recognizable for a Western audience, so that they can mm-hmm. understand. Um, but even then, like I feel like during the movie, um, I understood maybe 75 percent of what they were saying, because even their Jamaican accents yeah. felt kind of thick to me, and I was like really kind of yeah. Like, there was stuff that. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff that I didn't understand what they were saying. And I was wishing there were subtitles. So it's interesting because mm. they... There I, I was, I was wishing whole, there were subtitles yeah, too. It's interesting that there was this whole controversy about the actors not being Jamaican because they didn't want the movie to have subtitles. And that even still, I was watching the movie wishing there were subtitles. Yeah, so I think that, uh, I, I mean, I don't think that some titles would have hurt the situation. Mm-hmm. I think it would have helped a yeah. lot. I feel <clears> like <throat> I'd actually maybe want to watch it again with subtitles. Mm. Um, like whenever it comes on streaming platforms and see what I may have missed. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's good as far as all the language goes. Mm-hmm. As far as cinematography, <clears throat> I thought they filmed the the way they filmed everything was really w- great. Um, I, I didn't notice any like amazing shots, but overall there was lots of sweeping shots of crowds whenever a concert was happening, intimate shots between the characters. Um, <clears throat> yeah, nothing that that threw me off or made me go like, wow, that was shot beautifully. Yeah, it was it was it was good. It was it was standard. Standard. Um, so yeah. So having said all of that, the reason I would give it a mid tier was uh, it's probably more nostalgia. Like whenever I see a black culture, um, I'm always invested and I'm always leaning in and I'm trying to like squeeze out every last drop of uh, any, any culture that I can out of a black movie, whether that's Jamaican, whether that's African, whether that's African American. And so I was really invested just like listening to him and trying to piece the story together. But now that you're talking, babe, like I, I told, like I do agree. Like there were so many pieces mm-hmm. of this story that, <clears throat> that I would agree with a, a low tier mm-hmm. at this point. So, so we're both agreeing low tier for one love. However, I still recommend checking it out and seeing it because it was well done. But yes, I was I was bored at a couple of points because I wasn't really sure like where is this going, and that's some of the difficulty of a biopic. Mm-hmm. You're telling the story of someone's life, and there's only so much uh, rewriting that you can do to make the story interesting before you're just like making stuff up. Right. Yeah. Right. So so anywho, uh, we give Bob Marley a low tier rating. Um, 
definitely, <clears throat> I'd say go out and check it out if you're looking for if you if you're familiar with Bob Marley, you know his music, you know Jamaican culture. <clears throat> I'd say definitely pay to see it in the theaters. Give it a shot. Um, if you get a theater full of people, maybe I've heard there are theaters that are singing along with a bunch of the music as it was happening. Our theater was kind of, uh, there were only a few people in our theater. Yeah, so like, like there was no one singing in our particular theater. But um, yeah, that's our, that is our spoiler free review of uh, One Love, the Bob Marley movie. This is your hard stop. If you want to hear all the spoiler stuff, um, and the deeper discussion around the movie, continue on. But if you want to watch the movie for yourself, form your own opinions, stop here um, and then check back another time to hear our thoughts. Yeah. Cool. And that is that's that's your cut cutoff point. <laughs> All right. Now we go into the, the Davis, Davis debrief and we're just going to talk all the different things about this movie, what we liked, what we didn't like with all the spoilers, with all the spoilers and just talking about various different scenes. So, um, babe, is there anything you want to kick off first or do you want me to just pick something? I don't know. Okay. Do you already have something in mind? I have a few things okay, in mind. Okay, yeah. Then you go ahead. <laughs> okay. I know. Um, so I thought, uh, number one, w one of the things that always like that I always associate with Bob Marley is cannabis. Right. And so I was curious how the film was going to handle it. Cause in fact, like whenever I hear Bob Marley, I immediately associate it with cannabis and growing up, like that was just like a huge no, no, like, Oh, stay away from Bob. Mar I had lots of adult figures in my life just kind of like talking down about Bob Marley or like, oh no, don't get anything with his merch on it because cannabis, cannabis, cannabis. Obviously it's uh, a different time, a different era and pe the country's uh, overall vibe is changing toward cannabis. We're not here to discuss the ins and outs of that, just acknowledging that. But the movie, it does not um, directly, so there's definitely cannabis all throughout the movie. He mm -hmm. smokes in what, 40%? Of the scenes, quite a few. No, more. I feel Less? like there's something lit in the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, like whether me, it's him or someone, or someone else, else nearby. Okay, let's say sixty percent. Sixty percent of the shots, <laughs> there's some cannabis in there. Um, and I was really, really hoping that they would talk about that. Mm -hmm. That they would discuss or describe or or pull that out because as an American who, you know, I grew up during a time where uh, th that's the association with Bob Marley. And so I was really hoping that the film might shed some light on why Bob Marley smoked as much as he did or is associated with this. Um, after doing some research, because the film does not say anything, and I was really disappointed with that, um, he was a huge advocate for cannabis, but the film didn't say that. And so I was just, I was just kind of left disappointed and bummed that it didn't say anything. It just showed him smoking. It showed him, you know, with it lit, you know, 60, 70% of the time, other characters from Jamaican culture uh, with cannabis, but they never talk about it. They never discuss it. And I think it's to be as palatable as possible to the countries where it's not fully legalized, where it's not the norm. Mm -hmm. um, you're trying to create the largest market possible. But for me, that was just a disappointment that they didn't dive into that more mm -hmm. or e even bring it up. Yeah, especially because um, uh, what people think about him and his family as far as the use of cannabis is probably different than what it actually was. Hmm. And, um, you know, it could have, I feel like it could have, um, made a better, I, f I feel like it could have bettered, improved his image. Mm, yes. Um, if, if they had discussed it more. Yeah. The, wa the ins and outs of it. Yeah. Um, and that, <clears throat> That kind of like transitions into just sort of Jamaican culture as a whole, maybe Rastafarian culture as a whole. And um, I did I did some really basic like research into this. Um, and I, I just 
I wish the movie would have talked more mm-hmm. about Jamaican culture, about Rastafarian culture, um, about his religion, which it's is basically Christian, but it's got some like African uh, roots kind of m- mashed into there as well. Like they read the Bible, they believe Jesus, but then they there's also like similar to, I wouldn't say similar to Mormonism, but similar to like some other <clears throat> sects of Christianity, they kind of add on some other things beyond the Bible. Um, and so during the film, I was trying to figure out like, wait, was Bob Marley a Christian? Like, mm-hmm. wait, was Bob Marley? Because because like he's referring to the book of Exodus. He's referring to the book of Revelation. He's yeah. pulling lyrics straight from the Bible. Yeah. And I wish they would have unpacked that just a little bit more. Uh, but they didn't. They just kind of stated this is what it was and then didn't explain anything to the audience, which I was disappointed with. Yeah. And I mean, that's just kind of how the whole movie was. They didn't explain anything <laughs> to us. Um, so... Yeah, um, there's, uh, are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. Okay, so I think um, they were very unclear about his marriage and his family as, mm, a, as a whole. Yeah, and that was um, frustrating. And that's, I just don't understand, especially when it was, the movie was made by two of his kids and, and, um, his wife, his widow, yes, Rita. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I don't really understand all of that aspect. Um, but I wish they would have explained more about their marriage relationship. Mm. Um, and um, the things that they went through during his career because there were multiple times in the movie where she was gone and then she was back and then she lived in the States and then she lived in Jamaica and he was in England Mm -hmm. and you know, like we didn't know, are they still together? Are they, are they divorced? And they portray throughout like the first, like two thirds of the movie, they portray them as having Bob Marley and his wife having like this really strong Mm -hmm. loving relationship. From when they were so young. Yeah. You know, despite everything that was happening, Mm -hmm. but then in the movie, like there were, and this is how they try to allude to the openness of their, of their marriage. Like Bob Marley would be in a Mm -hmm. scene and then there would be a woman just kind of staring at him or Mm -hmm. with him at Mm -hmm. a payphone or like whatever. Yeah. And like you kind of raise your eyebrows like, what's that about? And mm-hmm. you're 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 thinking because you're watching a film that they're going to circle back to that yeah. and explain. But they never but they do. Don't. It's just like a little Easter egg for those who know that he 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 slept with many women, mm-hmm. had women or had kids with multiple women. Yeah, he had like 11 or 12 children mm-hmm. from like eight different yeah. women. Mm hmm. But his wife also had children, multiple children from other men as well. Mm -hmm. And it was just like they accepted it with each other. And, you know, they just, you know, they never divorced. Mm -hmm. They just continued to stay together and raise their kids. Yeah. And you don't you don't like find that out until the latter part of the film. Mm -hmm. And I don't like for storytelling purposes, I just wish they would they would have given like more East, like more clues to that, mm-hmm. talked to that a little bit more, created some tension for the audience. Because if you, again, like you were saying, the film is a little bit slow at parts yeah. and you got bored. And so if you're bored, you're not paying attention very much. And so if you blink, you're going to miss certain yeah. clues that are out there. But I think they, it needed to be more than clues. Yeah. It needed to be more direct connecting the dots. Help me understand yeah this flawed amazing man bob marley and they were just kind of brushing over it yeah and like there was a scene where he was writing a song and rita his wife had just showed up to visit him after like a while um when they were living in different countries and um she said something to him about like don't let those people do to you what they've done to us Mm -hmm. and so then i was like okay so what have they done to you like are you guys divorced now like what's what what's going on with you guys you know are you guys not together anymore but then 
but then they are, but then she's still talking about being his wife. And mm. so I'm like, okay, so what? What is, yeah. <laughs> what is this? So they did, I mean, so I did look it up. They did, uh, they never were divorced. They were married till he died. Um, they apparently had an open marriage and went through some stuff. Mm. And he had lots of kids with lots of different women. And yeah, I mean, they didn't explain that or mm, mm-hmm. show that in the movie at all. Which, I mean, again, if the movie is mainly about his music career, mm-hmm. fine, I guess. But, like, if that's all it's about, then why halfway show us his family life? Yeah. Like, if you're going to show us his family life and his love life, his relationship with his wife, then show us, then, like, show us enough of it to understand it fully. Yeah. And I think this this is part of the difficulty when family members create a biopic because they have a certain perspective and they want to honor mm-hmm. their father or husband mm-hmm. in such a way. Um, but but by omitting certain facts, it makes it hard for the audience to then connect with the story and connect. Well, wait a second. Like, what's mm-hmm. the what, well, what's happening there? And why are they explaining that? So I think this film would have been better if it were directed and produced outside of the Marley family. Um, it may have been more authentic to what the Jamaican people want uh, based on some of the reviews that we were listening to and some of the people just giving commentary before. Or it would have been a more complete story and I, uh, for the Western audience, but I feel like it's just some, it's kind of muddied in, in between yeah. as a result. So, and also you mentioned like the Marley family as a whole a couple times and mm. they didn't as a whole produce this movie together, like all of the children. Right. Um, and there's some division amongst the family as well. Apparently multiple members of his own family, like grandsons or something, or sons, mm-hmm. even wanted to play the role of him mm-hmm. and didn't, you know, get the part. And so there's or some, weren't offered the yeah, part. Yeah. So there's, you know, some stuff there going on. Yeah. So we can't <laughs> just like label the whole Marley family or whatever. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's sad because I, I like the movie. I think if you go into the movie knowing all of this stuff and are willing to do a little bit of research beforehand, I think you'll have a decent time. Um, I think that you will be enriched from the experience, but it just, it wasn't, yeah, they just, they just didn't tell Mm -hmm. a cohesive story. And whenever you're watching a film, it's story, story, story. This was not a documentary Mm -hmm. It was it was a movie. It was a biopic. And like you mentioned the trailer and the trailer was just captivating. Like we saw the trailer a couple of times and each time we were like, oh, my gosh, we need to see this Mm -hmm. because the trailer showed him getting shot. Uh, The trailer showed him like, you know, opening his shirt and showing that he was shot in front of this musical crowd and like all of these voiceovers. And I'm like, whoa, I had no idea he was like doing any of this Mm -hmm. stuff. And so when I was disappointed when we went into the movie and all of that stuff from the trailer happened within the first, what, 15, 20 minutes of the movie? Yeah. And then he ends up going to Europe. Just like traveling. Just traveling for a while. And it's it's not, and that's where like story wise, like Mm -hmm. what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it was telling what he did, but it wasn't like super interesting from a story perspective. He eventually goes back to Jamaica to do this concert and ultimately dies from cancer, um, which which sucks. Uh, I don't like how the movie seems to, as far as the cancer goes, because that's how Bob Marley died. He died of um, skin cancer. And uh, the movie seems to indicate that he didn't seek out any form of treatment or that he just wanted to refuse treatment because the doctor said, hey, if we mm-hmm. amputate your toe... You, you know, it might not spread to the rest of your body, but mm-hmm. he refused. And then the movie never addresses it again. Uh, he does ultimately in real life go on to consult multiple doctors. He does get his, um, oh, I'm not going to be too graphic, but part yes, of his part toe. of his toe is removed. 
and he does seek out multiple treatments, but ultimately none of the stuff is uh, works, and he passes away in Germany. Um, yeah, I at, think I think that he did he he as far as treatment goes, he refused the traditional chemo and radiation treatment. Mm. He sought alternative treatment, mm. and then he he died. Yeah, um, and um, yeah, so that. They didn't, yeah, they didn't explain that very much either. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I th- that's that, that, yeah. that I think, and when we'll start to wind this down yeah. here, that is the, the crux of all of this. They didn't explain enough. They mm-hmm. didn't explain yeah. enough. The, the runtime of this film, I just looked it up. It was an hour and 47 minutes, and it did give a nice taste of Bob Marley. I'm c- more curious and interested in Bob Marley as a result of this film, but ultimately... I don't feel like the film explained enough or Mm -hmm. anything at all. Yeah. Like they tried to explain a little bit about the civil war in Jamaica, the gang violence between the two like leaders of, Mm -hmm. uh, of the civil war. Um, but again, they didn't say enough. They didn't explain enough about that. Um, they showed a little bit about his family and his and his marriage. Mm. Not enough for us to understand. Right. And then they showed him traveling with the band, playing concerts, creating music with them, practicing. So you saw a little bit about the band relationships, like when he tur- like when his manager was doing side deals and he beat him up or whatever. Mm-hmm. But even then, what was his manager doing? Mm-mm. In the dark, right? That that was so bad that he beat him up and fired him. Like was they he... didn't say. Yeah. And so we were still left wondering, like, what was he doing? Did he steal money? Was he was he stealing? Like, was he making some sort of deals? <clears throat> like that yeah. Bob d- wouldn't have wanted him to make. Was like, he? Po- I think he was stealing money, but like, was he but, pocketing like five hundred dollars yeah, or five hundred thousand yeah, dollars? They never. Like, they never explained what he was doing. Or why he ended up getting beat up and, and fired. Yeah. And then also I was thinking, okay, if the if the movie is mainly trying to highlight his career, his music career, then I thought, oh, well then we're probably going to be shown like this like the inspiration to all of these songs that uh, he wrote. Yeah. And so like when he like one of the most popular songs that everyone knows. Like, Don't worry about a thing. Bum, bum, you know, bum, that bum, one. Bum, bum. Like, they, sh- they they had him sing that to his boys in the car after there was a shooting at the park when he was at the park with them for, like, two seconds. And then they never played the song, mm-hmm. like, again, or showed him creating that song. And... I don't even know if that's really what the song was inspired from. Yeah. And then there's all these other songs where they show him like playing his guitar and making up lyrics, but we don't know what it's about. We don't know what the songs are about or Mm -hmm. what inspired that moment or this moment or, you know, this, this scene where he's with the band and they're, and they're working on a new beat and they're working on new lyrics what inspired that moment? Like, yeah, yeah, I, all things that we would have loved to know, yeah. but they they just didn't dive into. So, it, yeah, it's not like us, like us putting this in a low tier is not for a lack of interest. Like, I really wanted to know more about all of this stuff, mm-hmm. and I just was let down. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ultimately, I walked away more curious about Bob Marley, yeah. more curious about Jamaican culture, curious about Jamaican food. I really want to find some Jamaican food nearby. <laughs> it good. I don't know if there are any Jamaican restaurants in Kansas City, but uh, we will hunt. Uh, if you know of any Jamaican restaurants, please let us know. But I think that's going to wrap up the Davis Debrief for today. Uh, low tier for One Love, the Bob Marley biopic. Um, I, again... We don't think this is a bad film. We don't think, you know, because again, we put this in the, on the same level tier as Argyle. Argyle, bad film. Do not go see that. Don't waste your time, in our opinion. <laughs> the One Love, I would say, if you're curious, if you're interested, check it out because um, it will enrich you to a certain extent. 
but there's so many missing pieces that mm-hmm. we just couldn't give it a higher tier yeah. ultimately as a result of yeah. that. So I don't regret seeing the movie. No. I, I enjoyed most of my time with the film. Um, yeah, just uh, just some letdowns yeah. uh, nonetheless. So thanks, everybody, for joining us for the Davis Debrief. Uh, we will be back ho- hopefully next week <laughs> and uh, reviewing something else. We know there's a couple things coming out that we want to see. Dune 2 being one of them. Uh, we were not fans of Dune 1, uh, but we'll see Dune 2, mm-hmm. and we'll let you know all of our thoughts and details about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, leave a comment, review, wherever you're listening to this podcast or watching it on YouTube. Really helps out the channel, and we appreciate you guys. Yeah, thank you so much. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye.